All right, uh, let's get started. So welcome to another lecture as part of our ME6151 computational heat and uh, fluid flow course. Uh, so in the last lecture, we solved uh, sample problems, a couple of uh, three uh, exercise problems from Patankar's book. We have also looked at the corresponding programs, uh, ran them and uh, understood them. So in today's lecture, uh, we're going to look at a couple of variants of the simple method and then we will uh, kind of see how do we extend uh, the staggered grid approach to uh, curvilinear meshes or to unstructured meshes okay so or the uh, essentially the difficulties associated by in, in extending this staggered grid approach to unstructured meshes is what we will uh, look at towards the end of the lecture today okay all right so um, uh, we uh, we kind of look at a a variance of simple algorithm today that is basically one of them is called simple R that is simple revised algorithm okay so essentially this kind of tries to address uh, some of the shortcomings of the original simple algorithm okay so uh, one of the approximations we made in the simple algorithm was uh, when you write the velocity correction equation that is uh, a e u e prime equals uh, sigma a n b u n b prime plus uh, delta y times uh, p prime minus p east prime equals zero. We said uh, the contribution of the neighboring cells uh, for the velocity corrections would be taken as zero. Essentially, this is to make, uh, this is to avoid the global dependence of the, of the pressure corrections, right? So, we said these two are zero, sigma n b n b prime and sigma n b n b prime are zero and then kind of derived the velocity corrections in terms of only pressure corrections and as a result we got a pressure correction equation uh, uh, we, uh, kind of uh, we got a pressure correction equation from the continuity equation right but this was okay uh, although uh, the downside is that the pressure corrections alone are responsible for correcting the velocities as a result the pressure corrections were large so we ended up with large changes in pressure correction which would eventually uh, result in large changes in pressure because p equals p star plus p prime is what we will use to correct the pressures as a result we have to kind of underlax the pressure right we have to underlax the pressure and uh, because of the underlaxation we will end up with uh, slow convergence right so this is one of the downsides of the uh, original simple algorithm uh, another thing is basically if you look at the momentum equation so what we have is we have a e u e star uh, so, so that this is basically the first issue. Okay, this is basically the first issue. The second one is basically, if you look at uh, the momentum equation, we have a e u e star equals uh, sigma a n b u n b star plus um, the pressure gradient that is delta y times p p star minus p e star plus b e. Right. Similarly, we have uh, the y momentum equation is a n b n star equals sigma a n b b n b star plus delta x times uh, p p star minus p n star plus b n right so this is basically your uh, momentum or uh, discretized uh, momentum uh, equations right for x and y or for u and v right uh, one one thing what we see here is that even if you have a you, you basically have to come up with a pressure guess and a guess for the velocities right you have to come up with star values for u v and the pressure now what we see is that although we have a good velocity guess, this velocity guess will be uh, has to be accompanied by a good guess for the pressure, right? If you don't have a good guess for pressure, then this pressure guess field is going to kind of destroy the velocity guess that we have because eventually you will get a new U star values at every cell. Although there will be some contribution coming from the velocities, but it will be kind of overridden or destroyed with the uh, pressure guess values. As a result, we have to so even if you have a good velocity guess unless you it is accompanied with a good pressure guess it is not going to survive right so then um, it is not a good idea because usually it is uh, easy for any problem uh, for us to kind of easy to guess the velocity field okay essentially the guess fields for velocities can be uh, intuitively guessed whereas it is not easy uh, to come up with a, a good guess uh, for pressure field okay so as a result uh, this is not uh, an ideal scenario okay uh, so that means a good velocity guess is destroyed 
um, if even if you don't have a good guess for pressure okay so as a result what we would like is we would like to uh, essentially have an equation which will kind of recover uh, the pressure field that means which is difficult to guess from a good velocity guess okay that means we are looking at uh, obtaining a pressure field uh, directly from the velocity field uh, somehow okay so that that pressure field can be used and then uh, on together with the velocity field and you can obtain the um, you can solve the momentum equations with that new pressure field which is kind of good okay all right so that means uh, the idea here in simpler or simple r suggests that we obtain uh, essentially correct velocity field uh, using let's say velocity field okay uh, obtain the correct pressure field using velocity field using a known velocity field and then limit the use of this p primes that we have the pressure corrections only to correct the velocities okay because you already have an equation for pressure don't use the pressure corrections to correct the pressure again okay as a result the p prime equation after it is converged will be used only to correct the velocities that is u prime and v prime and use another equation which is for the pressure to solve for the evolution of pressure okay so essentially that is the basic idea we will look at this in detail so if we go back uh, to the original momentum equation so of course this is again your uh, x and y momentum equations that is a e u e equals a sigma n b on b plus delta y times uh, p p minus p east plus b e on the staggered mesh similarly on the uh, north face we have a n b n equals sigma a n b v n b plus delta x times uh, p p minus p n plus b n okay so this is your on the east face and the north face for the staggered mesh the moment discrete momentum equations of course these have to be kind of come up with you you basically have to write stars for the pressures and stars for the velocities which i have not written here but it is understood that given if you have a, a velocity guess and a pressure guess you can solve for the momentum equations okay that is understood now we kind of try to come up with an equation for pressure from the velocities okay so as a result i want to kind of divide this first equation with a e everywhere so basically divide send this a e to the right hand side so what we get is u e equals sigma a n b u n b plus b e divided by a e okay i'm dividing with a e throughout plus we have delta y by a e times p p minus p east okay now here we call again uh, essentially this term this is sigma a n b u n b plus b e divided by a e as some u e hat okay so this is some u e hat plus we already know we were calling this delta y by a east as d e right some other coefficient so we can write essentially your momentum equation um, rewrite the momentum equation for uh, velocity on the east face as u little e equals u e hat plus d e times uh, p p minus p east okay so this is your now uh, the new uh, momentum equation right so this is your new uh, uh, momentum equation um, and we have rewritten as u e equals u e hat plus plus d times p minus p e okay all right then um, let us look at the other equation that is the y momentum equation this also we can send a n to the right hand side basically divide the right hand side with a n then we can write v n as v n equals some v n hat plus d n times p p minus p n right so that is basically v n equals uh, sigma n b v n b plus b n by a n plus uh, delta x essentially delta x upon a n times p p minus p n plus b n okay that is your um, new equation here so this is your new uh, uh, essentially this is basically the same y momentum equation but written in a different way right because we have absorbed all the neighboring coefficients and the source terms into this hat equation here okay all right and of course we have divided with the uh, with the ap coefficient or a east or a north coefficient in this context all right then uh, what we can do is now that we have the velocities in terms of the we have the phase velocities in terms of the pressure differences and the hat velocities right both for u and v what we can do is we can multiply these two equations essentially each of these equations with the density times area to get an expression for flow rates right so i multiply essentially i start off with ue equals ue prime plus oh, sorry ue hat plus d times pp minus p east that is this equation right we start off with this and then we multiply entire equation with rho times delta y right 
So what we have is rho u e delta y equals rho u e hat delta y plus rho d e times delta y times p p minus p east. Of course, we know that this quantity rho u e delta y is nothing but your uh, mass flow rate across east phase equals rho u e hat delta y. We would like to represent that as represent it as some f e hat, okay. Uh, which is basically mass flow rate defined based on u e hat as the velocity plus we have rho d e delta y times p p minus p east okay so let us call this equation one similarly if you uh, if you start with the y moment rearranged y momentum equation then we have v n equals v n hat uh, plus uh, d n times p p minus p n again if you multiply on both sides uh, by the density times the corresponding area uh, the normal area for this velocity then what we get is rho v n delta x equals rho v n hat delta x plus rho d n delta x times p p minus p n okay again we can call this as the mass flow rate through the north phase equals mass flow rate through the north phase based on hat velocities on the phase that is v n hat uh, so that means f n equals f n hat plus rho d n delta x times uh, p p minus p n Okay, so similarly we can write equations for the west phase and the south phase. Then uh, essentially we can invoke the continuity equation. The continuity equation is uh, the mass flow rates, all the mass flow rates through the phases should sum to zero. So that is f east minus f west plus f north minus f south equals zero. Uh, then you plug in the definitions for flow rates in terms of hat velocities. Okay. That means F e equals F e hat plus rho d e delta y times p p minus p east. So substitute that here. Similarly for F west we would we would basically get F w plus uh, rho d w delta y but there is a minus here. So both the terms become minus times uh, p west minus p p plus uh, essentially F north hat plus rho d and delta x times p p minus p north minus F south hat minus rho d s x delta x times p s minus p p equals 0 ok. So this, this basically looks very similar to what we have done before for the pressure correction equation right. I mean instead of writing uh, u uh, as u star plus u prime we basically came up with uh, some equation that is relating velocities to pressures right using hat velocities and then we invoked the continuity equation and somehow got an equation for pressure. Now this equation for pressure again looks very similar except that there are no primes here because this is the pressure itself uh, to what we have done before in the simple algorithm. Okay. Now only thing is that now if I rearrange this I can of course write this as uh, in the standard form as APPP equals sigma NBP and B plus B okay, where B of course is all these hat flow rates take it to the right hand side and A east equals rho D delta Y. A west equals rho d w delta y, A north equals rho d n delta x, A south equals uh, rho d s delta x and A p would be of course again sum of all these coefficients right. Uh, basically all the neighboring coefficients will go to the right hand side and the A p will remain on the left hand side. So this is basically A p would be equal to sigma n b. Then your b term of course is now basically minus f e when it is sent to the right hand side plus f w hat minus f north hat plus f south hat okay so this is your b term uh, remember in the pressure correction equation the b term was minus f e star plus f w star minus f north star plus f south star right these were all based on the star velocities where we said that the b term in the pressure correction equation uh, is basically the mass imbalance right or the uh, mass imbalance or the amount of mass or the amount by which the momentum equation or the velocities obtained by the momentum equations do not satisfy the continuity equation right that is the amount that b denotes in the pressure correction equation b term whereas here this is this is although it looks like some mass for it this is basically not the mass imbalance right uh, because because u e hat here is basically not the velocity of the phase rather it is only some component of it right because if you go back your u e hat is defined based on uh, sigma n b b plus b e by a e right so this is not exactly the velocity flow rate because you have this pressure term as well which is not incorporated into this thing so that's why uh, this hat velocity is kind of used for 
for working of the algorithm but it is doesn't represent a a physical velocity through the face right because the pressure gradient is not involved in this okay all right so essentially we realize that the flow rates based on the hats hat velocities is not the mass imbalance like or similar to the uh, you know unlike uh, the flow rates based on the star velocities which was representing a mass imbalance okay all right now essentially what we did is in the process we came up with an algorithm basically we obtained a an equation uh, for pressure itself right with a pressure itself uh, using essentially u and v as the values right u and v basically meaning u star and v star right because these u star v star will go into u hat v hat and the u hat v hat will eventually go into b so depending on those b values you will get a pressure field and this pressure field if you converge this thing you are going to get a pressure field that is coming from the guest velocity fields right so what we did is basically because it is difficult to come up with a good pressure guess but it is easy to come up with a good velocity guess we use the velocity guess and solve for the pressure using the pressure equation here and obtain the pressure guess now this pressure guess that is coming out of this converged solution and this velocity guess can be used in the momentum equations directly so that the velocity guess this guess is not going to be destroyed um, and we can somewhat hope to converge faster okay of course what we have done is in the process we introduced another equation which requires solution of gauss seidel again right so already we had to solve for two gauss seidels uh, two system of linear equations that is for x momentum and y momentum then we had to solve for one system of linear equations for pressure correction then in the simple revised algorithm we are introducing another system of linear equations that is appp equals sigma np and plus b this is one equation for pressure so essentially we added one more system to be solved in the into the algorithm okay with the hope that this although we are doing work here essentially you get paid off uh, when you solve for the momentum equations because the good velocity guesses that you obtain uh, would be eventually help you converge uh, quickly okay so that is the idea that means uh, now use the guest velocity field to obtain pressure field okay that's what we just discussed now use the converged p to solve for the momentum equations to obtain u star v star okay so essentially now once you solve uh, for the momentum equations then you obtain u star v star fields then use these to calculate the b term and solve for the pressure correction right and use this pressure correction only to obtain or only to correct u star and v star not pressure because pressure we will use whatever you get from here all right so let us see the complete algorithm uh, for simple revised so uh, we similar to simple we start off with the guess values for ue star and vn star fields then we calculate uh, from once you have this guess values you calculate the u hat velocities that is sigma and b and b star plus u e plus b e upon a e and vn hat equals sigma n b vn b star plus bn upon a e okay so we just uh, basically guess the velocities and um, obtain the hat velocities then we solve for the pressure equation okay so the pressure equation is appp equals sigma n b p n b plus b hat this b hat contains these hat velocities which is basically minus f e hat plus f west hat minus f north hat plus f south hat so essentially you need one uh, gauss seidel or solution of linear system here to solve uh, for pressure equation uh, with the uh, guess values for u star v star which are going in as basically uh, u hat and uh, v hat right uh, okay then we obtain a pressure so this pressure that you get here we can we can call it of course p star but we will just leave it as p so this p and these two uh, converged velocity guesses right that is whatever you get out of this equation is the pressure uh, and uh, this converged pressure and the guess to u star v star are now kind of in a good form because this pressure now is consistent with the with the guest velocity field okay uh, so that means then we can solve for the momentum equation so as usual this is basically this was the fourth step here is basically was the first step for simple right because we started off with once you have the 
guess velocities and guess pressures you you went to directly to solving the momentum equations but now what you do is you converge the pressure correction then use those pressures and the guess velocities and solve for the momentum equations of course uh, i have written the equations here but you, you have to write them in the uh, under relaxed uh, version of these okay for the momentum equations that is because you still have to use under relaxation for momentum equations because you the nonlinearity in the convection term or the nonlinearity that may come up in the source terms or something like that okay all right then uh, once you have the converged u star v star you calculate for pressure correction now why do we need pressure correction because we still need pressure correction to collect correct our velocities right we don't need pressure correction to correct pressure itself because we already have a pressure field so we still for solve for pressure correction again you have another solve for another gauss seidel here uh, solve for pressure correction till convergence obtain the converged p prime field okay which is basically a p p p prime equals uh, sigma n b p n b prime plus b where the b here i represented using b star to kind of distinguish it from the uh, b hat that we have used in the pressure equation so b star is basically minus f e star plus f w star minus f naught star plus f south star okay so once you have the pressure correction you correct your velocities from the pressure correction so u e prime is again exp expressed in terms of p primes right same as before right we had d e times p prime p prime minus p e prime okay so correct the velocities u e equals u e star plus u e prime v n equals v n star plus v n prime but uh, do not correct the pressure okay so do not correct pressure here because we already know we can already obtain pressure from the velocities okay so once you have this u e v n we can directly obtain the pressure the idea is basically you don't have to correct for pressure so as a result the pressure would not come with large changes in the pressure uh, as a result we can avoid the slow convergence of the pressure equation or the pressure correction equation or in terms of uh, of destroying a good velocity guess okay so these are the things that are addressed now using the uh, this continuity satisfying field like after you correct the velocities this satisfies continuity then of course you can solve for any other scalar such as temperature uh, species transport or any other phi uh, in the flow field okay uh, now then uh, we essentially come and uh, update uh, your star values with the updated values the corrected values that means u e star equals u e v n star equals v n and if it is not converged go back to step 2 now now again you got a new velocities that are just corrected as the guesses so with these guess velocities and the pressure you go back to step 2 okay now what do you do you use the updated velocities and calculate the hat velocities then you solve for pressure okay so this is where basically pressure field gets updated okay fine okay so that means we don't have to unrelax for pressure uh, but we still have to unrelax for the momentum equations to to account for the nonlinearity in the problem okay of course uh, we understand that in this in this uh, process we have introduced uh, uh, one extra equation which requires gauss seidel as well okay so simple revised kind of essentially fixes this problem that <clears throat> of the slow convergence of the pressure equation and also fixes the problem that uh, there is essentially a uh, it kind of obtains uh, um, a kind of good uh, pressure field from from a uh, guest or good velocity field okay so as a result we are not trying to find the good pressure field after destroying the velocity field okay so that is kind of the advantage of simple revised uh, of course the computational effort goes up because of the gauss seidel okay uh, a gauss seidel loop that has come up because of solving the pressure equation all right let us look at another variant of simple that is known as uh, simple corrected or simple c okay uh, so simple corrected kind of addresses uh, the neglect of the neighboring contributions that is remember you sigma n b u n b prime and sigma n b v n b prime were neglected uh, in the u e prime and v n prime equations okay um, but of course we realize that we don't want to include them because if you include them you end up with this unmanageably long equation 
which leads to global dependence of pressure right again that's not what we want to do because uh, we want to keep things to the near neighboring cells so as a result we cannot come but at the same time we don't want to neglect them completely because if you neglect them all this completely then the entire burden of correcting the velocities falls on the pressure so as a result a simple corrected proposes that um, you approximate sigma n b u n b prime uh, with uh, sigma n b u east prime so essentially it says the contribution of the neighboring cells times the neighboring corrections can be taken as uh, the neighboring the primary cell correction itself multiplied by the coefficients of the neighboring cells okay so that means uh, you see now this will simplify things right because you don't have to because the moment you write u n b prime as u e prime you don't have to solve for a system and you don't have that recursion of including for the neighbors and its neighbors will not come into picture okay but the as an approximation the coefficients are accounted for okay so that means sigma n b u n b prime it says approximate as u e prime times sigma n b and sigma n b v n b prime you approximate it as uh, sigma n b times v n prime okay so these are the approximations that are proposed by simple corrected algorithm that means our prime equations for velocities now get modified so instead of this was uh, this was earlier taken as a zero right this was taken as zero but now we don't take it as zero rather you write this as um, sigma n b u e prime that means if you take it to the left hand side we can write a u east prime times a e minus sigma n b equals delta y times uh, p p prime minus p east prime so your u e prime is now delta y by instead of simply a e you have a east minus sigma n b okay so this is basically u east prime equals sum d east times uh, p p minus p east prime where d east equals delta y by a east minus sigma n b okay so this is the new or the uh, velocity correction right this is velocity uh, u prime e in terms of the pressure corrections right uh, so this is basically the velocity uh, correction equation for simple character okay uh, where uh, de is not the same as before it has now the neighboring contributions as well of course uh, similarly we can write it for the uh, north face a and b and prime equals sigma and b and b prime plus delta x times uh, p p prime minus p north prime uh, then uh, again uh, instead of neglecting this completely we say sigma and b and b prime equals uh, vn prime times sigma n b so if you take it to the left hand side you get vn prime times a m minus sigma n b equals uh, delta x times p p prime minus p naught prime okay that basically gives you vn prime equals some d n times p p prime minus p naught prime where uh, d naught equals uh, delta x by a n minus sigma n b okay so this is the correction equation for north face now that is the only change that we do for simplex okay or simple c otherwise everything else uh, is the same as that of a simple algorithm okay that means we don't have an equation for pressure we only have an equation for pressure correction and we have to still correct the pressure as well as velocities and so on okay so simple c is basically a modification on top of simple where the neighboring coefficient contribution is not neglected in the velocity correction equation so this still simple c still suffers from the problem that if if you don't give a good pressure guess then your velocity guess might be destroyed because of a poor pressure guess okay which was addressed in the simple revised algorithm okay so as a result that needs to be taken care of. here of course simple c doesn't require uh, an additional equation like what we had before in the simple revised okay so as a result this is something quite different from the simple revised algorithm okay of course there are many other uh, variants of simple uh, called simple m simple uh, and uh, i think uh, simple best and a lot of other things are also available which we are not going into detail into all of them and uh, we are basically just looking at simple r and simple c uh, algorithms okay uh, all right now then uh, let us look at how do we extend uh, the concept of uh, staggered mesh for uh, let us say if you have curvilinear meshes okay or if you have unstructured meshes now 
let us look at extension of this staggered grid approach to unstructured meshes or to start with we will look at uh, curvilinear meshes of course things are much more complicated to extend them to unstructured meshes okay so with that in the back of the mind we a priori say that it is not very easy to extend this concept of um, concept of staggered grid because um, if you have a Cartesian mesh it is much easier to do things in a staggered way. If you have a curvilinear mesh we will see that we will run into problems and if you have unstructured mesh the problems we run into are more so. Okay. So as a result let us kind of see some examples of a curvilinear mesh. Here we look at uh, let us say uh, some kind of a curvilinear mesh like this which is taken and uh, the horizontal velocity here shown in blue kind of denote the u east and u west and the vertical ve velocity vectors here denote the v north and the v south okay for any of the cells and the cells are have a centroid that is uh, denoted using this um, filled circle here okay so well, of course uh, right away we see one problem basically if you start storing the horizontal velocities and the vertical velocities on the faces then we see that as we keep going we see that oh all of a sudden we come up with a cell where for this cell uh, the vertical velocity is instead of being out of the face it is now parallel to the face right and uh, and similarly the horizontal velocity instead of going uh, out of the face out of the face it's now parallel to the face now this is a problem this problem will be difficult to address uh, or essentially it shows up in solving the um, continuity equation because now we don't have enough data to solve for continuity right because up till now if you take this example you had some flow rate leaving and from some flow rate entering and some leaving here to the north face and entering to the south face whereas here all of a sudden you don't have a representation for flow rate because now vn is parallel to the uh, pa parallel to the this face now of course again this face happens to be supposed to be some kind of an east face now it happens to be north face right because it, it kind of slowly developed into because the mesh was turning right so as a result you don't have enough data for for the flow rates to be reconstructed from calculated from these velocities on the this u, u east and the v north values as a result continuity or discretizing the continuity equation uh, discretization uh, poses a problem and uh, we cannot simply solve this uh, problem unless some more data is specified which we don't have for the system to be solved okay so that is one problem that you see directly if you extend the concept of staggered mesh uh, that is basically storing the uh, storing the basically the Cartesian uh, velocity components uh, on the faces just like the way we did for the Cartesian meshes to uh, essentially on the faces causes issues uh, in the context of um, curvilinear and of course uh, for unstructured meshes as well okay uh, all right then okay then we can be clever we say okay we don't want to store why should we store the Cartesian velocity components I will come up with another uh, way of doing it because we are dealing with uh, curvilinear meshes I will solve or I will store curvilinear velocity components okay that means we come up with uh, something here which is basically again curvilinear mesh now we define um, the phase velocities as not as the Cartesian components like u east and u west rather as something uh, that is normal to the particular phase okay so this is nice because now uh, every phase has a normal and we define velocity vectors normal to that uh, particular phase so as a result red colors here denote your something like your east velocities and the blue color arrows here denote something like your north south velocities okay and as a result you have a description of all the velocities on all the faces for all the cells and you don't have a problem right so essentially this is kind of a workaround of course this can be done essentially store or define um, velocities uh, that is basically normal to the uh, faces of the cells right uh, rather than uh, using the Cartesian velocity components um, so this was tried in the literature so this is tried in the literature and this kind of definition of velocities is known as um, contravariant uh, velocity vectors okay um, this, this was tried in the literature so this exists so essentially curvilinear meshes with uh, contravariant velocity vectors 
can be solved using staggered approach but one problem is that with this the the terms that you get in the equation such as the diffusion and things like that will become uh, they will not they will become basically uh, non conservative okay uh, because of the because now the velocities are defined in a curvilinear fashion as a result you end up with non conservative form of equations or non conservative discretized equations which are not very really good to work with for all sorts of measures okay so that is one issue and also it becomes non conservative because now you end up with uh, uh, with the control volumes that kind of overlap with, e with each other because of these definitions and causes issues with non conservation okay so as a result this is also not a uh, so this kind of storing and solving is also not a uh, preferred way because we end up with losing the conservation uh, for the diffusion terms and things like that so as a result this is not very much preferred in the context of unstructured meshes at least okay uh, now another thing is basically the it is not very easy to generalize or what you get is basically not very uh, um, not very easy to implement okay so not very easy to generalize for different unstructured meshes as a result this is not preferred in the literature uh, of course then we can come up with another solution another solution is basically why not store both the components of velocities at all the faces so earlier we said if you only store the cartesian x velocities at a particular face and y velocities at a particular face like what we have done in the cartesian case then we end up with a the problem then let us now uh, be clever and say that okay we will store both velocities at both the faces at all the faces that means both store x and y x and y and so on that means we end up of course one thing you can clearly see is that uh, this will avoid the problem of mass conservation this is the continuity equation because although this becomes parallel you have the other velocity which will give you uh, in constructing the velocity vector at this particular phase correctly right so it's not a problem now your phase can be inclined at any angle you have both the velocity vectors then you can kind of obtain the correct uh, mass flow rate through a phase okay so this kind of addresses uh, the discretization of continuity equation however uh, the problem you see clearly is that this is increases uh, the amount of equations we have to solve for example instead of solving for uh, four equations right essentially one for u east one for u west one for v north one for v south four momentum equations we are now solving for eight momentum equations that means the uh, computational uh, effort has uh, is now doubled in 2d of course it will get tripled in three dimensions okay this is not very good uh, as a result although this method was again tried in the literature it exists in the literature this is not uh, an ideal uh, way to move forward okay because it increases the computational cost uh, by several times okay of course uh, then uh, what is the preferred way that means extending the staggered approach to curvilinear unstructured meshes is not very easy so uh, extension of uh, staggered grid uh, to unstructured meshes is not easy and it is not uh, worth pursuing okay so as a result uh, so it's not worth pursuing in its own own sense of creating a staggered velocities okay so as a result people finally um, came up with uh, reverted back to the collocated approach that is basically only store both components at the cell centroids okay so this is basically the um, collocated uh, storage of uh, velocities and uh, pressures right which we said is not good because it uh, uh, causes pressure velocity checkerboarding right as a result we did not prefer that but it looks like if you use some um, kind of uh, interpolation or interpolation techniques using some interpolation techniques the pressure velocity uh, checkerboarding can be avoided okay as a result uh, the collocated or collocated uh, storage of uv 
uh, and pressure all at the same location of the cell centroid and the use of the Cartesian components of velocities is preferred both for solving for curvilinear of course for Cartesian and or for any unstructured meshes. Of course we have to come up with some kind of an interpolation technique and this interpolation technique that we are going to see is basically does uh, what the staggering has done through a separate grid this interpolation technique will do uh, through equations okay so the interpolation technique is basically will do whatever is that is done by the staggering but through equations okay so we don't really have to store velocities here but we somehow use interpolation techniques and construct the velocities on the faces from these velocities that are stored at the cell centers such that we do not run into checkerboarding okay so that is the idea so we will revert back to the collocated approach uh, for solving all the Cartesian, curvilinear and unstructured meshes because the extension of the staggered approach to curvilinear or unstructured meshes is completely uh, not useful at all. Okay, So now we are going to see one particular type of interpolation in this course uh, that is predominantly used in all the software for uh, solving the incompressible fluid flow equations okay now if you look at uh, all the packages that are out there all of them use only this particular interpolation and all of them store uh, collocated uh, uh, all, the, all of them store the velocities and pressures in a collocated way okay so that is the idea so let us get back and look at the equations once again and the concept of the pressure and velocity checker boarding before we uh, kind of look at the particular interpolation technique okay so let us see what is the problem again to understand it such that from the equations let us understand the problem again and then we will kind of devise a method that will fix the problem of the pressure and velocity checkerboarding okay so we revert back to the collocated grid where we store uh, the velocities and pressures and temperature and phi everything at the cell centroid of course uh, in the staggered mesh even the code also doesn't look good because now you have so many uh, staggerings that are available which will make the code very difficult to read and understand as well okay so in that sense also collocated is much more uh, much more nicer to work with okay so we store all the velocity components pressure temperature or any other scalar at the cell centroid okay now we are also considering a two-dimensional cartesian mesh uh, and we will also for the sake of simplicity use a uniform mesh Okay. Um, all right. Then, uh, if you go back to the momentum equation, now let us. Now we are back to the cell P. Okay, because we don't write it for A east U east. Okay, we are back to the cell P. Uh, then uh, the momentum equation is basically A P U P equals uh, sigma in V U and B plus B P plus delta Y times P little W minus P little east. These are the pressures on the faces. Now using linear interpolation, if you use uh, linear interpolation for pressures, then P little w can be written as P capital W plus PP by 2. P little e can be written as P capital E plus PP by 2. Okay, So it's basically an arithmetic average of the cell values of the pressure because that is where pressure is stored. That means our AP UP equation will read uh, with these values substituted here as sigma in B and B plus BP times delta Y by 2 times PW minus P east. Uh, note that I think in one of the previous lectures I on the uh, i think in the introduction to fluid flow probably i missed this factor half okay somebody pointed it out all right so then uh, you have this factor half when you use linear interpolation into the momentum equation then uh, equation three is now your uh, x component of momentum equation for uh, cell p similarly now if i use the same concept for its e sniper that is for cell e i can write a x component of momentum equation right that is basically for the cell E, for the cell centroid of the east cell. That will be A east U east equals sigma A and B U and B. This will be the neighbors of east cell. Plus instead of BP, I have B east. Plus we have delta Y by 2. And what would be these values? This will be the west cell and the east cell. So the west cell for the east cell will be west cell for the east cell will be p cell okay and what will be the east cell for the east cell east cell for the east cell will be east of east okay that means we end up with the equation 4 which is basically uh, the discrete momentum equation using collocated storage for east cell okay 
Now, uh, we are doing this basically because you have momentum equation for cell P and you have momentum equation for cell E from which you can calculate what is the cell centroid values UP and U East. But eventually if you write the continuity equation then you would need uh, the face value of U little E, right? That means you need UP plus UE by 2 or something like that which will of course lead to some kind of velocity checkerboarding and pressure checkerboarding that's what we are kind of uh, going to see all right now again i can rewrite equation 3 as by dividing with ap everywhere i can rewrite this as up equals sigma nb bn unb plus bp upon ap plus you have delta y by 2 ap times p capital w minus p capital e like we have what we have done in the simple revised algorithm let us call this uh, coefficient as some hat velocity so your u at the cell centroid p u capital p equals u hat p plus let us call this as some uh, delta y by a p as some dp okay some coefficient d that is dp by 2 times uh, p west minus p east okay so we obtained one equation for uh, u p Similarly, I can write for u east as well, right? That is basically divide this equation 4 by this uh, center coefficient that is a east. That means sigma in b on b plus b e upon a east plus delta y by 2 a east times uh, p p minus p east east, okay? That means we got u e equals u east hat plus b e by 2 times p p minus p east east, okay? All right, where u east hat is basically this quantity and d east is delta y by a east okay so we left the factor 2 here all right so now you got essentially um, velocities at the cell centroids of p and the east cell now we want to calculate what is the velocity on the phase that is basically we want to calculate on the phase little e because your east cell is here and your p cell is uh, here right essentially we want to calculate on the particular phase that is that is this one okay how do we do this of course we can it's because we have assumed it to be um, uniform mesh we can take it as a an arithmetic average of the velocities of up and u east to calculate ue right essentially we have u capital p calculate ue from u capital uh, capital e and capital p right uh, okay let us do that that means uh, i can calculate what is velocity on the face as the arithmetic average of the cell values if I do that, what I get is basically u little e equals I have up hat plus u east hat by 2, right? Because I'm adding these two up by 2. So this is these two up by 2. That is u east hat plus up hat by 2. Plus we have uh, this plus this by 2. That is basically each of them is going to get a factor of 1 by 2 in the front. So this will be dp by 4 times pressure difference plus d east by 4 times uh, pp minus p east east, okay? So that is the final equation we get. Basically, the velocity on the face is equal to u e hat plus u p u p hat by two plus uh, d p times uh, p w minus p east by four plus d east times p p minus p east east by four. Okay. Let us call this equation number seven. <coughs> now, uh, this equation is basically uh, an arithmetic average of the cell centroid velocities. Uh, to obtain the phase velocity right we basically have done not much here basically what we have done is we took the momentum equations we have rewritten it such that we calculate the u at the p cell and the e cell and took an average of that that's all we kind of use this concept of hats and pressures to make it simple to write right okay now this is the velocity for the east east phase uh, we will also need a velocity for the west phase right and Similarly, you can write if you do the entire uh, algebra again, you will get u west will be u hat w plus u hat p by 2 similar to this plus you get dp by 4 and you get pp pw minus p east coming from the dp. Then you get instead of de by 4, you will get a dw by 4. Instead of pp minus p east east for the east phase, you will get for the west phase, you will get p west west minus pp. Okay. So this is something you have to... Um, verify all right so essentially you got uh, an equation for uw so uh, each of these velocities want to the, what they suggest is basically your um, the phase velocity has pressures which are basically pp p east p west 
P East East and P West West, right? If you look at East and West, the velocities are are there. Now that means if P East equals P West, that means this term is zero. Similarly, P East equals P West, this term is zero. That means if P East equals P West equals some constant k1 and P P equals uh, P East East equals P West West equals some other constant k2, then if you have such a pressure field, then your phase velocities will see that as zero pressure gradient. Right? That means if I have a pattern like this, if I have let's say my PP, P East, P West, P East East, P West West, such that I have 50, 10, 50, 10, then uh, essentially uh, the, the 10 and here, we, because both are equal, will make this term to be zero, right? As well as uh, this term also to be zero, right? Similarly, uh, the 50 coming from here, uh, here and here will make PW equals WW equals PP. So this term will be zero and also this term will be zero. That means the pressure gradient, although it looks like a checkerboarded pressure, which is 50, 10, 50, 10 and 50, this will be not felt by the uh, momentum equations. Okay. That means the momentum equations for UE and UW uh, will uh, perceive a checkerboarded pressure as zero gradient of pressure. That means they support the checkerboarding of pressure concept. Okay, the momentum equations. Now the idea is how do we fix this? Now what we do is we will not fix this in this particular case for the momentum equations. We will fix it for the continuity equation. Okay, so let us look at the continuity equation. The continuity equation is F East minus F W plus F North minus F South equal to zero. Uh, so that means uh, if you look at the continuity equation, if you substitute for rho U East delta Y in terms of the flow rates, we get rho U E delta Y minus rho U W delta Y plus rho V and delta X minus rho V S delta X equal zero. So again, if you use linear interpolation for the phase velocities, what you get is U cap E plus U P by two. Okay, and uh, and so on, and uh, the uh, basically, and then you have uh, if you plug in the phase velocities back into this, you get what you get is basically U capital E, U capital W, uh, because U P gets cancelled, V capital N and V capital South. So basically, what you get is U East minus U W delta Y plus V North minus V South delta X equals zero. That means there is no U P or V P in this discrete continuity equation. So as a result, this uh, supports velocity checkerboarding. Okay. So that means the momentum equations support pressure checkerboarding and the continuity equation supports velocity checkerboarding. Now, if, if both equations stop support the checkerboarding, uh, both the pressure and the velocity have to be satisfied by both continuity and momentum equations. Okay. So as long as both are supporting it, then these may still remain in the final solution. As a result, what we try to do is we will let the momentum equation still support checkerboarding, whereas we will fix the continuity equation to not support checkerboarding of, of the velocities or the pressures. As a result, the final solution will not have this checkerboarding uh, in, the, in the solution. Okay? So we will look at uh, the reach of interpolation uh, and uh, we couldn't do it. I think we are already uh, out of time. So we will look at uh, basically reach of interpolation that is also known as momentum interpolation and see how to formulate the collocated meshes in the next lecture. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. I will, uh, we will pick it up from the collocated approach for solving the incompressible flow equations using the reach of interpolation um, in the next lecture. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, do let me know through email. I will get back to you. Okay. Thank you.